Welcome back to the channel. We are in the garage today working again on the Alpha and in this episode we are tackling the exhaust headers. So uh, this is definitely a first for me. I've never done this before but uh, at least I have no idea what I'm doing. So um, anyways but what we what we have is we do have a DIY header kit. Um, so we got a bunch of tubes and flanges and pieces and stuff like that and we're going to work on getting that all mocked up put together and into this side of the engine bay. So let's go ahead and get that header kit unboxed and see what we have to work with. Before beginning the project, I took a look at those plastic header mock-up kits online. And while they are there and available and great, they are very expensive. Way more than I wanted to spend for something that I'm probably going to do once. So to save the day, 3D printing. So plenty of these models are available online. You can get them on Thingiverse or whatever. You can get them whatever tube size you want. You can get them whatever centerline radius you want. They take about an hour uh, each to print, and I could fit about nine on the bed. So after you know several weeks of printing, and this is what we wound up with. 44 3D printed straight paste pieces and 43 uh, curved pieces. Now these are 22 and a half degree curves. So four of these will make a 90 degree bend and these all you know, snap together. Now this is like those $1,000 uh, kits that you could buy for professional header makers, but they're not. Um, they're just 3D printed. Um, but hopefully they will do the job. The only problem that I've run into so far is that the fit is a little bit loose, so they don't exactly stay in place. Um, and so what I did to solve that is I got some O-rings and wrapped some O-rings around the little tabs right there. And now they stay in place. They do not move. Um, so the only bad part about that is now we have a hundred different pieces that we have to put o-rings on so let's get to it so how do we take these pieces and connect them to the pipe coming off of the header flange so we can see i already have one of these set up right here and it's already connected in pretty good. So there are these end pieces, and these normal pieces have holes all the way through, right? And they just snap together. These end pieces right here, they just have a flat bottom and a bolt hole through. Now normally, these are designed to actually go through a flange, and you just run a bolt through the flange, and you, and you connect it. Um, but they're not really designed for when you have stubs coming off the flange, and you're trying to go from this right to the pipe. So what we did, is we got these uh, 3D printed sort of rubber bushing things that we, uh, we printed these out of TPU on the 3D printer. And the idea is, is that, now I'm gonna sort of do this off the header just so you could see, is there's gonna be a bolt running from one side clear through to the other. And what that is gonna do is as that bolt gets tightened, it's gonna squish down on this bushing this way and it's gonna expand it. So what we'll do is we'll put it in here, which is just, it'll just fit right there. And we're gonna start cranking this down. Now we don't wanna go too hard because we are dealing with, you know, three printed pieces and plastic and stuff like that. But we just want it to bulge out and expand enough where it's not gonna go anywhere. And there you go. That is in there, it's solid and it's not coming out. And we do wanna remove it we just loosen up that bolt and this will pop right off and we can do the same thing in metal. You can see from the back side, you can see that the bushing sort of gets squished around that washer right there, presses up against the edges and gives it a really nice fit. So we're gonna do the same thing for the other ones. 
Now, these pieces snap right on, and the O-rings will stop them from rotating freely. You could still rotate them, but they won't just flop around. It's time to build some headers. Now, the best way that i found to start doing this is just to start doing it. Just start clipping pieces together, figuring it out along the way, seeing how it all works. Um, I know generally that's going to be, you know, that's the whole reason for having these pieces is that you can move them around. You're not, you're not wasting time cutting metal and welding and doing everything else. You just use these like big Lego pieces. So you can see right now, I don't even have the collector down there. I'm just sort of getting an initial idea about how I want these things to go. Um, <clears throat> you know, I'm working with the particular bends that I have, trying to clear the, the sort of the, the inner fender section right there and just messing around with things and seeing how it goes. Um, and there's no reason why if you don't like the way that something goes or you can't just stop, try again. Um, this initial mock-up that I'm doing for the front cylinder, I initially am trying to go underneath the rest of the uh, tubes. But then eventually you'll see a little bit later on, I sort of change methods on that and I start going over the top. <laughs> now, generally speaking, I want to try and keep all these primaries as equal length as possible. Now, that's really not going to be you know, super possible just because of the lack of space and probably a little bit of my lack of experience, but I am doing what I can. So for example, uh, you know, the forward cylinders, I'm trying to go as straight back as I can um, to keep them as short as I can, while the back ones are where I actually need to make them longer. That's why they sort of like go off to the side and make these big dramatic, you know, loops as they come around. Um, so <clears throat> Hopefully we're going to get them relatively close to each other, but uh, just the fact that we'll have headers that work, you know, that's going to be the primary reason. So right now you can see we actually have the collector down there, um, and that's sort of just tack welded down there on some metal holding it up. Um, I've already done the rear cylinder, I already got that in metal, um, and that's sort of holding everything in place from the collector side of things and making sure that we have a nice solid uh, piece to, to, you know, attach to. So from this point, it's really just about taking all of the individual runners, breaking them down into their little sections, and then making each one one by one. So if we have a section of five straight pieces, we'll break off that straight piece, go cut a matching piece of tube that's that same length, get it all tacked on. Um, same thing with the curved pieces. Um, if we have curved pieces that are all going in the same direction, we can we can cut that as all one big piece. We don't have to have little tiny pie cuts for every one of these sections. So part of what I'm doing here is trying to trying to make sure that if we have a couple pieces of, of pipe that are mostly along the same line, you know, I'm seeing if I could fudge things and, and sort of rotate them around so I can keep them all on the same curve, all on the same line. Um, so again, less cuts, less welding, you know, less failure points, things like that. So it's really just a matter of uh, going through one by one, a lot of trips between here and the bandsaw, taking a plastic piece, making a matching metal piece, coming back, tacking it on, sometimes, you know, adjusting the fit as, as necessary and, uh, and just going one by one. Um, I specifically laid these out going from the rearmost cylinder to the frontmost cylinder, just because of how they lay on top of each other. You're really only going to be able to, to get them in in one direction but I am just tacking these in place right now. So um, we're not gonna do any finished welds on this. The idea is, is that you tack everything in place, uh, even while it's still in metal. And then at the very end, what we could do is we can carefully cut out the tack welds just where they connect up to the stubs on the flange. We could take each individual runner out and then fully weld the runner. So they're just, you know, all fully welded single piece runners and then come back and then one by one starting from the rear to front weld it to the flange side of things now the collector has a slip-on connection so i won't have to worry about welding it to that side um i just have to worry about welding it on the on the flange side on the engine side of things and then there are some retainers that i'll be able to weld to the collector just to make sure that nothing slips out now this is a really really tight fit these primaries in the collector it's a really tight fit it's probably not going to go anywhere but uh, i got two retainers that came with the kit so i'm going to go ahead and weld them in and uh, just so nothing moves i will probably wind up i'll definitely wind up getting these uh, ceramic coated when it's all said and done i may wind up wrapping them uh, over the top of ceramic coating we'll see um, but that's going to be for 
a later section. And here is the test fit in its final form. So as you can see, not a whole lot of room there. Um, we did have to clearance uh, the inner fender right there and clearance that little flame frame section right there. Um, but it's enough to get my hand through and the engine torques that way. So I think it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be good. Uh, we have just enough room there around the collector. I'll get rid of this little flange right there. Uh, just enough room around the collector and in between the head and everything where I think this will work. I think this will be good. You can't really see it too well, but the steering box right down there, there's just barely enough room, probably about eh, three quarters of an inch, an inch, something like that. So I think that's all good. So at this point, we're gonna head underneath the vehicle. We're gonna see where that collector comes out. I figured I'd probably have to chop that a little shorter, obviously put a bend on there. But we're gonna crawl underneath, see where that collector comes out, see how much we have to cut off um, and what we have to get in order to swoop that around under the car and then get the V-band welded on the end of it. So let's take a look. All right, so here we are at the bottom of the header. This is the collector right here. So we got three inches at the bottom of the collector. Basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to just make about a 45 degree turn down here just to go straight back. I'll eventually be going out the passenger side, probably right below the door. Um, but we're gonna figure that out later. Right now I just wanna sort of get it underneath right here. Now, I probably will wind up going with some oval tubing, um, but trying to get an oval transition and everything else in here and turn at the same time is kind of a pain in the ass. So I got some uh, three inch mandrel bent uh, J bends and I'm gonna go ahead and figure out the about the angle that I'm gonna need in order to send it back right here and then transition to oval from here I may have to take out this section of the floor just for a little bit more clearance right next to the tunnel but we're gonna be putting a hump in there anyway so I'm not too worried about it plus race car um, the only things I want to do like I said I want to keep it tucked up as much as possible this is like the little frame rail section right here you got the transmission cross member right here so if I could just keep it tucked up generally, you know, above the lower part of this transmission and the cross member and everything else, then I'll be good. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and just kind of eyeball here for a second, figure out what this angle is, or at least get it close. All right, looks like it's about a 60 or 65 degree. 
So we're gonna go over to the bandsaw, get something cut up, test fit it, see how it goes. Alright, so we got this all cut and cleaned up, and that is that is pretty much it right there. That's that's exactly how it's going to go. So I am going to put a V-band somewhere in here. I'll have to decide if it's going to be right here or a little bit further up, but there's plenty of good access right here, and I figure it's a good point to be able to just undo the V-band clamp right here, disconnect it from the header, and drop the whole rear section. So I also got a flex joint to go in here just to try and isolate it because there's not gonna be that much exhaust and I'm gonna be tucking it up pretty tight. So I'm gonna use the uh, the flex joint to try and isolate it a little bit. So let's go back over, take a look at that, maybe start welding some things. All right, as you can see here, we got ourselves a little bit more clearance here from the floor pan. So let's take this new section and see how it fits up. All right, that is, that is great right there. So I think that's about the closest I'm gonna get to have, you know, to having a really good ground clearance. Um, and obviously we'll just hump over this with sheet metal on the inside, but that's, that's actually really good. I like how that fits. It's plenty of room to get to the V-band bolts right here. And uh, we'll probably just wind up leaving it like this for now until the engine is in its final place. And then we'll work on the tail, uh, the tail section of the exhaust later. So the only thing I want to do right now is get this uh, V-band flange welded onto the bottom side of the headers. And then we're gonna call this project good for now. All right, that is it for this episode. We're gonna leave this out of the car right now because we're actually gonna be pulling the engine very soon here to clean up some of the other stuff and work on some other projects. So let me know in the comments uh, what you think I should work on next. We have electrical, we have fuel system, um, we have all sorts of stuff uh, that's gonna be coming up, uh, including a steering project, which we'll be, uh, we'll be talking about here soon. So anyways, um, give me a like, give me a subscribe. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think we should work on next. Other than that, we'll see you next time.